Welcome everyone to th this episode of our Cape Ann Art Waves, which is hosted by me and my colleague, Christine Fisher. We're alternating weeks. This is a new show, um, relatively new over the last two months. And our, our, uh, our goal is to, excuse me, we have a little bit here. <laughs> and our goal with this show is to dig deep with our artists here on Cape Ann and beyond. And also get a feeling for how they have um, kind of created, you know, in the climate that we're in right now, you know, what's different and what's new and what they're looking forward to. So without, um, actually, I really want to hear from Jen. <laughs> back today, <laughs> who's dying for my attention. So uh, let's get started. Um, Jen is no stranger to the art world. Uh, so I'm going to, she has a rich background as an artist. I've had the pleasure of knowing her since about 2011. And I think it's really important to hear from her um, a little bit about her background and her journey, uh, not just here in Gloucester, but also outside of Cape Ann. So Jen, why don't you just kick it off? Okay, hi, I'm Jen Greek. I was born in uh, Gloucester, Mass, and I also graduated from Gloucester High. Um, from there, I went to school in New York City. I went to Parsons School of Design. And then after that, I went to NYU grad. I graduated um, with Parsons for, in a fashion degree. And then NYU was costume for stage and film. Um, after working for a bit in the costume world, I came back uh, to take a little break. I came back to Gloucester and uh, reconnected with family and things like that and decided um, to stay and and from there um, I started a fashion company um, even though my I moved on to NYU with with um, stage and film I wanted to give it a little uh, try and from there it's been kind of a roller coaster of of uh, ins and outs of what I want to do what I didn't want to do and um, from now on I'm, I'm thinking I'm going back to costume design Okay, let's let's go back because you mentioned you started on the fashion path, and mm -hmm. I guess you were right in the heart of that when I met you. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that because that's a um, fashion business is a little bit of a mystery to the outside world, but we've gotten a glimpse of it through some of these uh, reality TV shows like Project Runway, and the one I've gotten uh, a little bit addicted to is Making the Cut. Um, and I'd, I'd like to get your perspective on whether those uh, shows are actually real to you. What and sort of, you know, how would you describe your overall experience in the industry as, as, as honestly as, as you can? Okay, so when I was in fashion school, um, I realized that what I really loved about clothing was character, design, um, history, things like that, the real nitty gritty of real life. And with fashion, um, it's a little bit different. And so when I ended up um, going into costume design, it was the love of clothing, but in a history and more psychological standpoint of what people love about it. So a lot of fashion is like a character, like you are designing for a character. Um, your customer is your character and you have to be true to that. And a fashion line rarely ever changes their customer. They really do want to stay true to their customer because that is their um, source of business. And the customer always wants to go back to you. So part of the reason why I liked costume design was because um, it's always changing. Different people, different places in the world, different time periods. Mm -hmm. So in the fashion world also, there's a lot of knocking off. Um, even, even at the high end, you know, when I, I did an internship for like one day for this one really high end designer, first thing they had me do was go down to Chinatown so they could get this one dress and just knock it off. Mm. Um, there's also, uh, depending on the type of fashion company you work for, whether it's something like Old Navy or even, um, higher end you're less hands-on. Um, they really work with CAD now. There's not a lot of fashion drawing. There's not a lot of hands-on. It's like, you know, you have your department in, the, in your company. 
whether it's working with the computers or um, grabbing different kinds of samples of fabric. But I mean, there's definitely some exciting design going on. It's not that there, there isn't. So there's, there's different levels of your, what's gonna, what you're gonna be able to do and what kind of company. Um, when you're working on your own little fashion line, which what I was doing is you get to dictate what you wanna do, but you really have to figure out what you want. Um, it's all on you. Right. All the research, the finding the fabrics, making the patterns, making the fit correct, then, then you have to scale up the patterns from extra small to extra large or whatever range you want to go in. Um, you got to make them, you got to make them look well enough that people are going to feel that that's a quality product. But um, there's a freedom there because it's all on you. So there's, you know, different things about that. And um, with the, with, sorry, with the Project Runway, there, uh, like I know we had talked about, you know, they're throwing people curveballs like this is your customer now mm -hmm. and design for this customer. Well, you're going into the show with a personal identity of, right. of, a, a, of who you are as a designer. So um, it is a little challenging, but for a costume designer, that's what you do. Ah, right. You know what I mean? So you like that. Yeah. So it's interesting. Why don't you, because I didn't ask you this, um, you know, before, but describe your brand because you have a brand, you have Harpy mm -hmm. Fashion. So, you know, in a nutshell, what is your brand? Okay. So Harpy Fashion, um, first of all, the name Harpy is a Greek demigod. She's um, half eagle, half woman and rather vicious. So I took that name <laughs> <There's a lot. laughs> because my last name is Greek, but also just that attitude. Right. So my clothes always have a little bit of more of an of a of a an edge to them. It's feminine with an edge. Hmm. Excellent. I like that, Jen. And I can't believe I never really asked you that question before. Um, let's let's go. Uh, let so you're in the final analysis for you. Um, were those are those shows any? Are they real? These reality TV shows are they real to you? Can you relate to them? Um, I relate to pressure um i'm really good at procrastinating like a lot of artists are and honestly i do my best work under pressure because you can't second guess yourself mm -hmm. you have to go with your gut and a lot of times as an artist sometimes the true inspiration is through that mm -hmm. um i'll do a fashion line and i'll draw like 20 um actually i'll draw sorry 200 mm -hmm. <laughs> um and the first 20 are kind of usually what i pick yeah i could like go off of them a little bit um but I, when I had too much time, I actually did my worst stuff. Mm. But with those things, they're not, they're not real in the way that, that um, the time is, you know, you, you don't want to make a product in that little amount of time. Right. Okay. I got gotcha. you. That's good. Let's move on because you've done some exciting things. And in 2017, after participating in this, is, that was our fourth um, celebrate wearable art event um, you were actually our co-winner um, mm -hmm. we had some fabulous entries that year and um, I think it was a fantastic experience for all of us um, so let's just talk specifically about um, about that and what your um, creative path has been since then you know because I think that was sort of a breakthrough for you yeah um, the years before I was always giving my fashion work and I was like, that's not wearable art. It is, but it isn't. And I was starting to kind of, uh, really want to branch out into something new. And I'm so happy I did because what really doing wearable art versus fashion did was get to experiment in different ways of, um, you know, problem solving. Mm -hmm. Like I have this idea, how am I going to make this happen? Um, and I got to experiment with all different kinds of fabric, fabric manipulations that normally I would never even try. And then I can use those, those ideas that experimenting on future projects. And I did actually with the costume design for Bosoma dance. Um, mm -hmm. but at the same time, um, if you're, if you're a, a metal artist, a wood artist, you don't have to be a fabric artist right. or a fashion designer to experiment in new things. I mean, 
So I think it's well, worth it for anybody to do. I think the, the piece that's behind you was a direct outgrowth of your piece from the show, was it not? Um, yes. So what actually happened was I did that wearable art piece mm -hmm. and then I talked to Catherine Hooper of Bosoma and she had an idea to redo one of her old dances, one of her masterpiece dances. Mm -hmm. And, um, she liked, she loved the idea of my wearable art piece as the end piece. Mm -hmm. So then she had a story to tell and I had to work my way back to the, to simplify, to simplify, to tell a different story. And the costume design for the, I like to say phase one of three was something like this. And then I turned it into a fashion uh, jacket. Right, right. So that was, I think it's really that part of your path that um, I wanted to just, you know, for the audience, we just, we don't have a ton of time, but just to set, just to sort of crystallize for everybody where you went from fashion to wearable art and back to costume, I think, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, I think um, the experimenting, the, the really going out of, out of the box and then having to reel it back in, um, but also the changing, like getting to do different things all the time. I really, the, the energy I had coming back into theater was like no other, I think, the reason why I want to step back from fashion is because um, the passion's not there. Mm. Um, I might be really good at it, but right. in the end, I work my I work so hard. So I know that when I'm not working hard, something's wrong. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, the passion and things like that. And um, so even though you're good at something, doesn't necessarily mean you should go into it as as a job. And right. so costume design brings that back, that energy back. And I'm still in fashion. I mean, I'm still doing fashion in some way, you know, costume design is a form of fashion, but. It's but I think that if, are you going to continue making the pieces that you were making for fashion, the jacket? No. 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 Um, if you own one of your pieces now, it becomes even more valuable. Yeah. I mean, I won't ever say that I won't do custom pieces, but to do like a fashion line yeah. and have to, pr so I, I mean, basically, Myself, I was doing 40 pieces twice a year just for shows, for fashion shows. Then have to do, um, then I had, Christina Pierce was selling my stuff around the country and then she got an order and I had to make that, ship it, get it out in time. You know, so, I mean, that was just a lot for her. Scalability is very difficult. When yeah. you want to make each piece, you know, really special. I totally get that. Um, so I'm going to combine a couple of questions because we're going to run out of time. So um, I want to talk about in general where your inspiration comes from and then specifically how you've managed to, I guess, sort of continue your creative path during this particular period of time when you, the world around all of us shifted significantly. And I know that you make your living from a couple of different sources. And so you know, did this time accelerate your creativity or halt it? You know, sort of where did you come out? Where have you come out of the last couple of months? And sort of where you get your inspiration from and then where you've come out the last few months? So because things like the theater have also halted, obviously my costume design has halted, which was very frustrating because I was just about to launch it off. Mm -hmm. But it allowed me to do things that I normally wouldn't have time to do. So going back to my welding, Mm -hmm. um, going back to some ceramics. I mean, everybody's like, oh, you're doing that now. I'm like, actually, I've always done it. I've just never really had time to do it. Um, right now, I'm doing a lot of favor pieces because I've had people that have donated equipment or, or like their time, like um, firing the clay and things like that. So right now, I'm making, I'm making gift pieces for everybody as thank you gifts. But from there, I'm not quite sure. And I think that's always been my... Um, my downfall is I'm a little too willing to give things away. But um, where my inspiration comes from is history and nature, basically. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my sculptures, whether it's metal or ceramics, usually comes from nature because um, where we live, but also I think my romanticism um, mm -hmm. as, as who I am, um, I always find the beauty in 
things. Like one of my favorite fashion design lines that I did um, way back in the day was uh, I was running through Ravenswood and this green moss was growing all over everything. And I came up with like this weird park ranger thing. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then history, you know, um, so this right here, this jack right here, this is um, this whole swirl pattern here. You know, this is all coming from me researching textures from different cultures um, around the world and historic, you know, references. Mm, so all these books, I mean, you can't see them all, but I mean, it's all research books. Yeah. Well, it's, you certainly know, you certainly know what you love. <laughs> um, and I guess the challenge at this point then is, do you, do you see any additional kind of commercialization around your work other than working with you know theater and um, dance for example because you know that's very periodic and right now that's kind of on hold but right, right. any other ideas about commercialization of your work or are you going to just sort of take this one step at a time i think um i'm not going to be like all you know blazing forward with the ceramics and things like that but i think i'll test it out and if i can combine everything um you know maybe i'll be able to make some money here and there but i do want to go full force and back into costume design okay but yeah i think as i make things and there's only so many things i want in my house right so, yeah <laughs> of course. well selfishly speaking though i do hope that you um even if it's a, you know, a small collection. I do hope you continue to make pieces, even if they come out of the costumes that you're doing. Yeah, and I think that doing one-offs, like where something is really a wearable art, but very wearable, but um, making it so it's one size fits a, a lot, you know? So I'm not looking to make one just to make 20 more of them. It's gonna be more specialized if I, you know what I mean? And it'll be when, you know, when I'm inspired. Um, I think you've, you know, definitely, um, I guess, figured out a way to sort of get through this, this time in your own sense, in a productive way from an artistic standpoint. And so now the question is, is, is you kind of come out of this, what are you really, I mean, I think you've answered it partially, but what else are you looking forward to? And we never really finished the discussion about wearable art, but I know you had some very specific ideas about what you had hoped for with that. So mm -hmm. anything that you think you'd love to see in the future, just kind of throw it into your final comments here. Okay, so with the wearable art, I really want to be part of the process of the show and really kind of bring more different people in um, and really assist them with problems um you know i could be the person that they go to for like you know the fabric type problems especially if they're not fabric artists to begin with mm. but also um from here the my main thing is throughout the years i've always done what i was good at but maybe didn't love and like i've really taken way too much time but taken the time to really go back and figure out, nope, that's what I should have been doing all along. I think I'm truly happy with that. Um, and that's where I'm, why I'm going back to costume design because it's been years and years of rediscovery and pulling my hair out, you know? So I'm, I'm doing what I love and that's important to me now more than what anybody else is gonna convince me is the right thing to do, right. what they think is the right thing to do. That's great, Jen. I really I appreciate your, uh, your honesty in that. Okay, that's super. Is there anything else you want to add before we close up today? No, stay safe, everyone, and thank you. All right, that's great. Well, that wraps up our interview with Jen Greek, who is among my absolute favorite artists who I've had a chance to work with over the years and watch her evolve and grow. And I think that people will enjoy watching this on St Studio 1623 YouTube channels. They can pick it up on Facebook and they can pick it up on channel 12. We have a regular spot now. So if you check the 1623 Studios website, you can find out exactly when you can watch Cape Ann Art Waves. So thank you to everyone. And your next show will be hosted by Christine Fisher.